Good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Spirit of Fire Fellowship. I'm Pastor Mike May here in the great city of Richmond, Virginia. And we wanna welcome everybody to our online worship experience. We don't believe it's by chance that you're here today, but we do believe that there's something that's gonna be shared that's gonna be a blessing to your life. So on behalf of my wife, Pastor Raquel and myself, we just wanna say welcome to everybody and thank you for tuning in today. And so, hey, at this time, I want you to go ahead and share this video on your social media platforms. Let people know, invite somebody to come in today. Um, this is going to bless you. I believe that this is going to encourage you and strengthen you. God has um, placed something in my heart to deposit in you. And so before we even get going, we want to welcome our first time visitors. We don't believe it's by chance that you're here today. And so we thank God for you. Just let us know where you're tuning in from. If you don't mind, put it in the chat comments or the comment section, just whatever state that you're logging in from, whatever country you're logging in from, if you um, feel comfortable doing that. And so listen, we just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you for showing up today. Spirit of Fire Nation, we love you guys. Appreciate you so much. We are growing, we are growing, we are growing. We are excited and we are increasing more and more. Yes, we declare it and decree it in Jesus' name. Um, I want to pray and then I'm going to share something real quick before getting into the message um, that I have for you today. Uh, so let's just go ahead and have a word of prayer. I just want to pray over you and bless you and set the atmosphere and set the tone. Um, the praise and worship is going forth. So I know you're already in the presence of God and God dwells and abides in you and I. And so wherever two or three of us are gathered together, he's in our midst. And so even if it's virtually, we're gathered together in his midst. And so, Father, we thank you for this. Another opportunity to minister to these, your precious sheep. Thank you that revelation knowledge of your word will flow freely from heaven, uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. None of me, all of you. Holy Spirit, speak to my vocal cords, think to my mind to bring wisdom, knowledge, and good understanding of the word. We do approach your holy written word reverently. We thank you for every ear that is anointed to hear this word, every heart that's open and receptive and ready to receive the engrafted word of God, which is able to save our souls. Father, we cover the gifts of the spirit to be in operation and demonstration, and we thank you for it now. Yeah, we cover earnestly the best gifts to manifest on our behalf. And so, Father, we thank you for your glory. We thank you for the people of God that are just gathered together, those that are tuning in live and those that are watching on replays and, and people that are logging in and, and seeing and receiving from you and expecting to receive from you. We thank you, Father, that you meet their every need. We thank you that you watch over your word to perform it in our lives today. And so we declare and decree your goodness, Father, for you are a good God and there is none like unto you. You are possessor of heaven and earth. And so we thank you this day and that you've given this earth unto the children of men and that you've given us authority over the works of your hand. And so, Father, we come before you today. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercies that are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. And so we declare and decree that all is well with us. We declare and decree all is well with our children, all is well and with our spouses, all is well with our families. And so, Father, we cover every member, partner, and supporter with the blood of Jesus. We thank you that the angels of God are encamped round about them to keep them, to protect them in all their ways. No evil plague will come out of their dwelling. Nothing evil shall happen unto them. And so we declare that your favor is changing policies, rules, regulations, laws, hearts, minds, and decisions to be changed and reversed on their behalf. And so, Father, we thank you. We thank you for an increase of assets, especially in real estate and an expansion of territory. So right now we declare, we believe we receive by faith our new facilities, that Father, our new worship center. We thank you right now for our new warehouses and office spaces. We thank you right now for the new vehicles for the ministry. We thank you, Father, right now that everything that is needed, the drivers that are needed, the volunteers that are needed, the staff that is needed, we thank you that we're calling them in from the north, the south, the east, and the west. And we release right now angels to go and to make the way plain and straight for them to come. We thank you, Father, right now that we have a good name with you and with man today. 
We declare and decree right now that, Father, things that have been said about us are shown to be in the wrong, things negatively said about us. We declare and decree every person who's come against us, who is wishing for our demise, we speak blessings upon them even now. And, Father, we thank you that you are making a table before us in the presence of our enemies, and that, Father, when it is all said and done, every prophetic word that you've spoken over us and over this ministry shall come to pass. We declare it and decree it now in the the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We declare and decree. We declare and decree. Let's bring the music down. We declare and decree. I want them to hear me. Go ahead and cut it off. We declare and decree in the name of Jesus. We call on the angels of God. We call on warring angels to come now on our behalf. We take authority in Jesus' name over every satanic and demonic force in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you. I speak over every member. I speak over every partner. I speak over every supporter of this work. I speak Speak increase over their lives. And Father, those that have been struggling with condemnation and guilt, in Jesus' name, I declare and I decree that that condemnation is removed, that they understand who they are in Jesus' name. And Father, we give you praise for it in advance. And Father, we stir up our faith right now in Jesus' name. Your word declares that whatsoever things that we shall say, doubt not in our hearts, but believe that those things which we say shall come to pass, that we declare that we have whatsoever we say in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you right now, even for past mistakes and failures, that we are not hindered from the mistakes of the past, but we are allowed the love of God, the joy of the Lord to shine forth, and that we are not hindered and held captive by those mistakes in the past, that, Father, you are even turning our mistakes around and causing them to prosper on our behalf in in Jesus name. Now Satan, I take authority over you right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I declare and decree that every attack and every assault, I cancel it. I call it null and void in Jesus name. I declare right now that every hurt heart is healed today. I declare and decree that every physical body is quickened by the power of the Holy Spirit right now in Jesus name. And Father, we thank you. We glorify you. We magnify you. We honor you. We adore you. And Father, with the fruit of our lips, we give thanks in Jesus' name. And so right now, Father, we lift up our hands, holy hands without wrath or doubting. And we declare that all is well within us, with us, and around us. Father, we thank you that he that hath performed a good work in us shall complete it and have begun this thing shall complete it and perform in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I speak into your future. I declare right now that all is well. I speak into your past and call you healed right now. In Jesus' name, whatever Father is wrong, make it right right now. Whatever is crooked, make it straight. In the name of Jesus, I intercede and supplicate on behalf of the people of God right now, and I declare right now that all is well with them. I declare right right now. That diagnosis are being reversed and changed right now. I declare right now that all is well with them. I speak to their vocal cords. I speak to their body parts. I speak to their ligaments and joints. I speak to their organs and I command them in the name of the Lord Jesus to be healed right now. And Father, we thank you. And we glorify you. We magnify you. We honor you and adore you in Jesus name. And Father, we thank you for power being manifested. We thank you for your glory being manifested in Jesus name. And so, Father, we bless you. And Father, we magnify you. And Father, we glorify you. And Father, we honor you. And we adore you now in Jesus name. Amen and amen. And amen. She said, what is this? What are you doing? I'm, I'm praying on your behalf. I'm declaring and decreeing that in the name of Jesus, that everything that you need, everything you believe in for, this is that that was spoken by the prophet Joel. This is that that God has prophesied. This is that. 
I'm telling you now, don't you back off in your faith. Don't you back off because it's been years that things haven't happened. Don't you back off because you've been damaged. And as I was praying and getting ready for today, I was seeing people who have been damaged, who have been hurt over the mistakes of the past. And, and Satan is trying to hound you. He's trying to get you to remain stagnant. He's trying to get you to fear that you're going to die in your wilderness. And so in the name of Jesus, I am here to encourage encourage you that you will not die in your wilderness, that you will see the goodness of God in the land of the living. So don't you dare give up now. I pray right now that the spirit of might hits your body, that the spirit of might hits your spirit and that you be strengthened to overcome, that you be strengthened to receive and that you be strengthened to believe in the name of Jesus. Now, whoever that's for, I need you to type, I receive it now. I receive it now in Jesus name. Yep, I'm coming out the gate with this. I receive it now in Jesus name. Yeah, I receive it now. It's too much for you. It's too much that God has for you. There's too much. And I want, I want to read some, something to you. I want to come out of the book of Romans 4. I want to come out of the book of Romans 4. Because I want you to understand. Listen. God got something for you. God got great things for you. We've been dealing with grace and we've been dealing with this faith and favor. And we thank God and we deter we are determined to see the goodness of God in the land of the living. And God is saying this. He says you get excited about things. You shout it and you praise. But he says, I need you to even restructure. And I need you to begin to structure yourself to receive what I have for you. Now, watch this. I'm just reading this real quick. This was something I wanted in Romans chapter four and verse um, 13. It says for the promise that he should be the heir of the world. Talking about Abraham for it was not to Abraham or to his seed. Watch this through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. For if they which are of the law be heirs, faith is made void and the promise made of none effect because the law worketh wrath for there. Watch this for where no law is, there is no transgression. Therefore, it is a faith that it might be by grace to the end. The promise might be sure to all the seed. OK, there it is. Therefore, it is a faith that it might be by grace to the end. The promise might be sure to all the seed, not to that only which is of the law, but to also that which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. Now, watch this as it is written. I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead and call up those things which be not as though they were. You have to call those things which be not as though they were. We still have to live by the law of faith, faith over everything. And so as you begin to believe, watch this, grace has made it available, but your faith has to lay hold of it. And you got to call the thing that be not as though it were. See, if you had a broken arm, so now, and your arm was broken, it doesn't say it call what calls away what is, but it calls the thing that be not. So if your arm was broken, that means mended arm or healed arm be not. But now you got to call the thing that be not as though it were. So I call broken arm healed in Jesus name. So now you bring that thing from the unseen to the seen. What is it that you've been dealing with? You having a hurt heart. You having a broken heart. Some people have broken hearts and broken spirits because of what you've been through. You have yet to for truly forgiven yourself. You forgiven others, but you still holding yourself in, in this condemnation. And this is how I heard it in prison. You have held yourself captive and that you not believe in the way you used to believe. You're not as excited as you used to be. And over the years, because of damage that's been done, not only physically, but emotionally, God is saying, I want to heal you from all emotional damage, from the memory, from the stain of it. And I need you to start participating by calling the thing that be not as though it were. 
You got to stir your faith up. You got to stir your believing up and you have to declare that I will see the goodness of God in the land of the living. I know it's been 20 years. I know it's been 25 years. I know I don't have my Bible highlighted. I know I got all the notes. I know I got the information. He says it's time to act now and you got to start declaring it and you got to start believing it and you got to start doing it and you got to start living it. Watch just call those things that be not as though they were. What is it that you need to call out? Call it out. Let it come from the spirit into this natural realm. Understand and remember who you are. Rise up in that authority. Rise up in that thing and declare that all is well with me and my house. Some of you need to jump up and go around your house now and declare that all is for me and my house. We're going to serve the Lord. Everything got to line up. My money got to line up. My body got to line up. My mind got to line up. My children got to line up. Everything around me got to line up in Jesus name. And I'm telling you now, you said, where is this coming from? It's coming from my spirit. It's coming from that place of when enough is enough, when you are fed up and you are saying, wait a minute, I have this right and authority. I have this privilege and everything that's attached to me has to grow. But pastor, I don't have any strength left. I don't care. The same God that came upon Samson, the same God that that spirit of might and strength. I've been hearing this thing this morning. Somebody needs supernatural energy and strength to get the job done. That strength is available. The same hand of God that came upon Elijah, the same hand of God that came upon Lazarus, the same spirit, the same hand of God that came upon Jesus to raise him from the dead is going to quicken your mortal body and make it alive. So I need you to speak over your body and say, because watch this, for you right now, strong body be not. And so you need to call strength to your body. You need to say, body, I command you to be strong. Mind, I command you to be sharp. My mind is blessed. I have the mind of Christ and the wisdom of God is formed within me. Whatever it is you need, you need to declare it and to decree it. And watch this. It says in verse 18, as it keeps going, it says, who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations. According to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. God spoke it to him. He believed it. And it was counted to him as righteousness, as in right standing with God. Why? Because he believed what God spoke to him. You got to believe it again. You got to believe what God spoke to you. And he says, watch this. And here we go. He says, and being not weak in faith, Watch what weak, weak faith does. And he considered not his own body now dead. Watch this. When he was about a hundred years old, neither the deadness of Sarah's womb. Whoo. He was saying, watch this. He considered not the fact that he was past the age where he should have been producing children. He considered not the deadness of his wife's womb to even receive the dead seed that was in him. He was like, uh-uh, God gave me a word. And so whatever got to come together for this word to come to pass, it got to do it now. I don't care if it seems like you've been past your prime. God's word says this. Watch this. Watch Watch this. All things are possible to him that believe. Man, who am I preaching to right now? He said, I don't care how long it's been. I don't care how long it's been. I don't care how long it's been. Don't consider the problem. Consider the promise. He says he didn't. He considered not his own body now dead when he was about 100 years old. Neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. I think Moses might have been about 80 when God told him to go tell Pharaoh, let my people go. Listen to other people. It would have seemed like, man, it's too late. It's too late for you. You passed your prime. God is saying, no, as long as you still live it, my promise is still in effect for you. And whatever it is I spoke over you, the destiny and the purpose is still intact while you still breathe it. So you glory to God. You better hear me. You better hear me, mama. You better hear me, daddy. You better hear me, son and daughter. Whatever it is that God called you to do, it is still in effect. It's in full effect for you now. Who glory to God. 
I'm telling you now, he says this, he staggered not, he staggered not, he didn't, watch this, verse 20, he staggered not, he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, through unbelief, that's how you stagger when you don't believe. So now we got to work on our believing. This is why Satan is trying to keep you shut down by attacking your mind and making you feel like you missed your window and you missed your season. You did not miss your window. You did not miss your season. But now I know, I hear this. You better get up and believe now. You better believe now. Believe God now. Believe God now. Man, whoever this is for, you believe God now. You believe God now. I know what it's like to beat yourself up because you didn't follow through. I know what it's like to have that harassment. But then God reminded me of the word that he spoke to me through this man of God, this prophet of God. When I was 16 years old, he says the enemy is going to come and harass you with mistakes of the past. But you're going to allow the joy of the Lord to shine forth. And so that's what you got to do. See, joy comes from what you know. And even though Satan has come to harass you, to make you feel like you made bad choices, you made bad decisions, you made all of these mistakes, and that you can't recover, I'm here to prophesy your recovery right now. I'm here right now. The Spirit of God is going to resuscitate you right now, and he'll give you strength and energy to accomplish every task you need to accomplish right now. Get your house in order, woman of God. Get out of that slump you've been in, and arise in the authority of who you are. Declare it and decree it in the name of Jesus and rest well every night when you go to sleep. I come against painkillers now. Yeah, ooh, glory to God. Somebody's been taking medication to now supplement and to now medicate your pain. Now watch this. Not, I, mean, I ain't just talking about physically. I'm talking about emotionally. Whatever substances you've been using to medicate the pain, you coming off of it now in Jesus' name. The high won't even take. You won't even be able to get drunk off of some stuff you've been drinking. And I'm talking about the hand of God coming upon you where you are sober up by the Spirit of God. Who glory to God. I'm telling you, I've been there. I was preaching to this dude. My wife and I were preaching to this couple in their home. The dude was high or drunk right before our very eyes. She can tell you. Eyes red and everything. And as I kept ministering to this dude and kept speaking into him, I saw his countenance change right before my very eyes. And this dude sobered up right before our eyes and got born again on the spot. Watch this. Why? Because the anointing showed up. God says, you better preach and pack this power that you walking in. And and release it now in Jesus name because that anointing removes every burden it destroys every yoke and it's time to manifest my glory and my power and people got to believe you got the power in you you have my grace in you you have my anointing in you and it's time to arise and shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you I'm telling you now, and watch this. Uh, yeah, he says he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. It's time for us to give glory to God. Give glory to God. Listen, sometimes you need to have a good old fashioned praise break. You need to say, wait a minute, God, I'm going to give you glory no matter what. I'm going to give you honor no matter what. And when you get in your own home, in your own prayer closet, by yourself, with nobody around, you need to start declaring and decreeing, Father, I give you glory for the promise that you made. And I drown out doubt and unbelief. And I declare faith right now over this situation. I speak life over this situation. All things are coming together and working together for my good. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what the facts have said. I don't care. Listen, God will blind the eye. Oh, Lord, help me when I say this. Yeah, he'll blind the eyes of the people that's even working on your application where they won't even see or even look up some stuff they need to look up. But they'll just approve you right now in Jesus. I'm telling you, God will do whatever he got to do to get you whatever he got to get to you. And you got to trust him right now in Jesus name. And I'm talking about the faith of God. I'm talking about the favor of God. I'm talking about the goodness of God is manifesting on your behalf. 
And we have seen it and we are seeing it. The goodness of God in the land of the living. And you got to shut your eyes to the stuff that you see around you. And you got to see with the eye of faith. You got to see in the spirit. You're going to go into the spirit and say, "Uh -uh, uh uh-uh, uh-uh, I see it, Lord. I see it. And I'm going to lay hold of this thing. And watch this. I'm so busy believing you that I'm going to be swimming in it and living in it before I even realize. And when I open up my eyes, I'm going to be further along in my life than I ever thought I would be. And I'm declaring it now in Jesus name. Whew. Glory to God. Man, I feel like I just dumped a bunch out of my spirit, man. I'm telling you now. It's going to be imputed unto you for righteousness. What do I mean by that? Right standing. Why? Because you believe God. And just like Abraham believed God, you got to believe God. I got to believe God. Your faith is going to overtake you and overwhelm you. You better believe God again. Believe God again, sister. Believe God again, brother. Listen, somebody needs to hear this today. Faith over everything. Listen, you walk in the love of God. You release love and forgiveness for people. But God going to make you a table in the presence of your enemies. Watch this. But you, you can't have no bad attitude. You can't have no nasty, vindictive attitude. You got to work on your heart. You got to let it go. The sting and the pain and the shame. Watch this. Whenever that sting comes in your heart or that this disdain for the person that you felt like hurt you, that that said something against you or you felt as though they didn't value you properly. And then whenever you see, the, see them or hear their name or see them on, on, on social media or whatever, it's something in you that rises up. The moment you feel feel it rising up, you need to take authority over and say, no, I refuse to succumb to that. And I only choose to believe the best for that person. And I speak life over that person. And I declare, I forgive that person. And father, I thank you right now. I walk in love and I demonstrate love towards that person in Jesus name. I'm believing for too much and I ain't let nothing block up my faith from activating and working properly. Listen, you got to forgive by faith because your feelings telling you one thing, but now out of your spirit needs to control your emotions and say, no, mind settle down. Bless the Lord. soul. in the midst of it, I choose to believe and trust God. I choose not to have a bad attitude. I choose to believe the best and I'm going to walk this thing out in Jesus name. And so now God is saying, you got to believe. You got to believe. You got to believe. That wasn't even my, my sermon for the day. That was just, <laughs> I was just doing this from the jump because I feel as though, man, your faith needs to be reactivated. See, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. You got to stay in faith. You got to start in faith, stay in faith, and end in faith. You got to believe God all the way through. Don't start strong and finish weak. No, uh -uh, uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. Stay the course. Believe God. Don't back off now. Don't back off now. Let me share something with you. This might help somebody right now. While you're going and believing God for this ultimate thing, Remember, scripture talks about 30, 60, 100 fold. First the blade, then the ear, then the full corn in the ear. Watch this. Sometimes as you're manifesting through levels, going to the ultimate thing, you got to know how to believe, trust God, be content in the stage that you're currently in. You might ultimately believe in for this mega thing, but God starts telling you and wisdom starts showing up and starts telling you, okay, along the stages, okay, where you are now, bless them at that stage. And to say, okay, let me, let me, let me give you an example. I heard this testimony uh, from a preacher. And he was talking about he was believing God for this Mercedes. And so he was believing for the Mercedes because his mentor had a Mercedes. And he says, okay, God led him to this particular bank um, to go and to get qualified for the car. He went in. The guy was at the bank. He said, all right, preacher, what can I do for you today? He didn't even, he didn't have an appointment. I mean, this was just supernaturally led by God. He says, I'm looking, so I'm coming in to, to get a car. He says, okay, what you want? He said, a Mercedes. He says, well, um, you can, you're going to get the Mercedes, but choose something else right now. And then he gave him another car. He said, well, um, you, yeah, I believe you'll get that eventually, but choose something else. And he says, and then he ended, watch this. He says, I want a Buick Park Avenue fully loaded. He says, that's the car. 
He says, go ahead, find the car and we'll take care of it. He said the guy never even looked up his credit, never looked up anything. He said he just went off the strength of his word. Watch this. He said, because if he would have looked up my credit, I would have not qualified at all for this thing. He says he went there. But watch this. Then the question was asked him. Well, isn't that kind of you dumbing down your faith? He's like, uh uh. He says what that was was he says that was God's wisdom being released to me at that moment and stage in my life. Because now I couldn't handle the Mercedes at that point, but my desire was for that. He said he got that because he told even it was a pastor. He told his congregation, I'm going to have a new car by next Sunday. And it was like, God, why did I just say this? But he was doing it by faith. But he says when God blessed him with that car, that was the that was the blade stage of him getting to. And he eventually got to the Mercedes and went beyond that to Bentley and Rolls Royce status and all of those. But it was like he started at that point. And sometimes some people will get discouraged because God blesses you at a certain stage, but you got to know how to be thankful and how to be faithful at that stage so that God is progressing you. That is not your ending. It's just your starting point and you're growing. Watch this, because now if you say, well, no, that ain't it. I'm believing for greater. I want this. I'm not going to take that less. I rebuke you in Jesus name. You coming against my faith. No, that was God's wisdom showing up for him. But he had to acknowledge that. Why? Watch this. Watch this. He he said, because God led me to that man and God knew if he led me to that man, there was something in wisdom in that conversation that was going to be released to me. Because sometimes when we walk in by faith, sometimes we can get so stubborn in something that we're missing the blessing of progression. And God is trying to grow us in this thing. And so now God is saying, I want you to watch this. And then you think that you're a faith failure because you didn't see the end. Watch this. He says, I kept my faith on the Mercedes even while I purchased the Buick Park Avenue, fully loaded. It was still a brand new car, nice car, far beyond where he currently was, but it wasn't the ultimate. But he knew that, okay, I'm going to keep my faith there. But watch this. He wasn't riding any longer this big torn down, broken down, beat up jalopy that he was driving while he was preaching faith and prosperity. And so God not only did it for him, but it was showing the people his progression along the way. And so he learned, he said, no, I was just driving in the blade at that time. But he realized this is the starting point. And so I'm going to progress. It's better for you to be driving that brand new than to be walking or driving something that you can't even trust is going to get you from point A to point B. Do you hear what I'm saying? So God is saying, I'm growing you. Some of you are like, well, I'm still going to believe it. No, you're missing the point. You're keeping your faith for the ultimate. But God may be blessing you along the way so that now you can have stability, growth, and you can still keep moving and keep producing and still keep living while you're still believing for the ultimate. So whatever stage you're in, take it for what it's worth. What have you been believing God for, but you've been holding yourself back from forward progress because you haven't seen the ultimate. You got to start where you are. So start where you are and watch God accelerate you. And you're going to accelerate and grow. I hope you get what I'm saying. I hope you get what I'm saying because you got to believe and trust God. And watch this. God knows where you are at this moment. Everybody's faith walk is at different places. Some people is like right now. That's what your faith can handle at this moment. You may desire this because what you've seen from others and you know that you have a right to it. But now you got to understand when you get to that place, you got to be able to handle that level that you're believing to live at. So now be faithful where you are, faithful over the little ruler over much. So what is it that you're releasing your faith for? You keep it before you. You keep declaring, but be sensitive to the leading of the spirit of God. See, remember the word and the spirit agree. And so sometimes what happens is you can get so caught in the letter of the law that you miss the spirit of it. And so while you're releasing your faith, God is moving you towards the ultimate thing. But now you're going through stages and growth as you go to it. I hope you get what I'm telling you right now. This is for somebody that needs to hear this. Somebody needs to hear this. Faith. Ultimate. Since God trying to get some stuff in you and through you that you don't even realize he's trying to work through you while he's going to. We release our faith for things 
that sometimes we don't understand the answers that God brings along the way to answer the thing that he's tough, that we praying for. You praying for, you know, like somebody praying for a husband or a wife and God start talking to you about your health. The means that, okay, you start praying for this, that, or the other. But now what God is doing is he's answering it through the instruction he's giving you to prepare the way for that thing to take place. You just want wife to show up, but you ain't worked on your attitude. You ain't worked on your health. You ain't worked on your bank account. You ain't worked on this. And so now, because watch this, God just as concerned about them as he is about you. And he don't want to bring no messed up man to the woman who's been faithful to him doing all this stuff. He want to make sure that you ready to be the king and the husband to this wife and queen he's already developed and prepared. So God is already working in you. So don't neglect the instruction of the spirit of God. The spirit of God is giving you instruction. There are instructions that the Holy Spirit has been giving many of you. And you so focused on, well, I want this. And God is saying, do this. And you keep neglecting that and it's hindering you. And now he says, until you pass the test of this, you will never get to that. Because that'll crush you if you don't develop certain things at this stage and you got to get ready for it. You can believe for big, but are you structured to handle big? You got to get ready for it. No, this is a word here. No, this is a strong word, but this is a word here. This is a wise word here. Get ready for your next. I hear that again. I, I spoke this to you all a few months, a few weeks ago, I believe. It's about your next. Whatever he's telling you to do now is getting you ready for your next. You're getting ready for your next. You're getting ready to move. You're getting ready to shift. Get ready for your next. Get ready for your next, children of God. I'm telling you, get ready for your next. And it's going to accelerate. I'll, I'll be safe to say, I feel like I feel released. I can say this. Once again, your consistent, even minimal efforts will start releasing God's maximum provisions. There is a consistency that God is trying to get his people on. A rhythm of the grace for your life. Things he's telling you to do on a daily basis. Walk for 30 minutes a day. Begin to reduce sugars and things out of your diet. Begin to go to bed a little earlier because now your body needs to replenish because you don't realize what's attacking your immune system. He's telling you, you need more of this. He, all of a sudden, you're getting this urge. I need to go visit the doctor just to get a checkup. But now fear tries to come in because what if they find something? You'd rather them tell you what's going on so that you can release your faith and do what you need to do to come against that thing than to be blind and just keep going in the wrong direction. Do what you got to do. Take the assessment. Sometimes taking assessments of yourself and your life can be some of the hardest things you have to do because you got to be honest with you. And you got to say, hey, I've been bad at this. I've been horrible. I've been a procrastinator. But now I declare, watch this. Faith calls those things which be not as though they were. Call yourself a go-getter. I'm quick to do what I'm supposed to do. Turn that into your confession. I do it now. I do it now. I do it now. I'm quick to obey the spirit of God when he reveals things to me. I'm quick to obey. Listen, you might as well obey then because if God wanted you to do it later, he would have told you later. So let, when he tell you to do it now, get up and do it now. My wife tell me all the time, if it comes in, you might just do it. Just do it. Because there are many times I missed opportunities like, man, it came to me to do that. It came to me to talk to that person. It came to me to call this. It came to me to, to take this with me, but not knowing I was going to need it during the day. It, see, when the Holy Spirit, he's leading you. They that are, watch this, led by the Spirit of God. They are the sons of God. And the earth is waiting for the manifestation. It's groaning. It's in travail, awaiting the manifestation of the sons of God. Oh, glory to God. Yeah, rubashe kalabate se te kumba. Ye te fufa shatala lebe se te de debre. Yanda ne nebro. Ye hante she kataba do bofo she te ke mete. Mata la basa. Mote pete frete. Okay. Shoto kumba masetene. Masetene. Mota kalabasetene. Ye manana na nebre. It's been on my heart. And I'm going, we're going to do it this week. I'm calling for a time of prayer for this entire week. 
there's a there's an acceleration I've been feeling in my spirit. There's something that God has been wanting to release in the earth. There's something he wants to release in this ministry in the lives of the people. Sobre machete ko revache de de bro soto kon. Ye de ba man de be hefe de kon. Okay. Sobre machete ko bra bra sete de de bre sete de ko bra man le be sete de de bo. Hala la ba sa ta robo ko chata re be sete. Handa da ba sete no. Yeah, 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 yeah. From Monday, now we have our normal prayer every day of the week. Seven Monday through Friday, from this Monday through Friday, and then on Saturday we'll have our regular corporate prayer from nine to nine thirty in the morning. But this I'm gonna do online live. Monday through Friday this week. Monday through Friday, we're gonna have prayer live. But well, we are praying for the needs of the people, and we're gonna get this thing done. I was going to set seven o'clock weeknights. This has been in my spirit. I got to obey. I got to obey. God wants to release something in the earth. He says he can't do anything for mankind except the man prays. It has to release it into the earth. There's going to be a tremendous outpouring of the spirit of God that's taking place. And God is calling forth his intercessors to speak life. Like never before. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Also. I'm going to bring up something again because I got, I got to just do this on the spot. I, I'm, I'm kind of doing this on the fly. I don't like doing that all the time. You know, I want to make sure that we plan and get some things. But for me, it's like, okay, he's telling me, speak it, get it out there and start moving towards it. Um, do we have the picture? I want you to bring up, this, bring up the picture. I don't know which picture you have right now. Um, I mentioned some time ago about a truck that the Holy Spirit spoke to me about purchasing a truck for the ministry. Do we have it? Can I see it? I want to make sure I, if I see it. Is that it? Can you flip it around? Is there any way? I want to make sure. Oh, it's similar. Yeah, it's similar to that. Yeah, it's similar. I was in prayer, and he said, I want you to believe for a truck to pay for it. Pay for it. I was like, uh, okay. And I'm like, God, and I was trying to talk myself out of it. It's like, God, this don't make, it don't make sense. We're believing for a facility first. All I know is it was strong in my spirit and I wrote it down on paper. I mentioned it. But it's like now it's time to pursue it. And one of the reasons is, is because of the work that we need to do. One of the things is outreach. Other is mobility. Until we lock in the facilities, because at times when we need to be mobile, I don't know all of why he's, I know some of why he's telling me to do it. I just want to obey what he's telling me to do. Now, there was something else I received that same night that I haven't released just yet, but this is the first thing. So this is what we're going to do. This is how we did in the past when we believed for our first van. We got the image, and I got this from my pastor, of how we did it. We would stretch our hands towards it every week and declare in the name of Jesus, we believe that we receive this truck paid for. That's what we're going to do. Later, I'm not doing it right now. I want to have some discussion, plan some things. But later, we'll start talking about sowing towards it. This is because this is one of the faith projects that we need to work on. First things first, while we're still in process of believing for the facilities, for us to have everything that we need, this is one of the first faith projects as a, as a group. I want us to start releasing our faith for us. So intercessors, you just, all you have to do is declare, in the name of Jesus, we believe we receive our new truck. 
You call it a box truck, I think, paid for. We believe we receive it. Excellent condition, everything. So that's what we're believing for. All right, I'm putting it out there. So every week, we're going to put it up. We can do it during our offering or before service, to how we do it. But we're going to declare. So I want everybody right now, wherever you are, I want you to say this. I want us to operate in faith together. There's a reason why I believe God is doing this. There's some momentum he wants to bring. There's some momentum. He says, okay, I want you to say this. Say, in the name of Jesus, we believe that we receive. And stretch your hand towards the picture if you you see it on on your screen. Say, in the name of Jesus, we believe that we receive our new truck paid for in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, Father, we thank you for it. And we believe we receive it now in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Now, angels, we release you to go. Make the way plain, smooth, and straight and bring that thing into our possession in Jesus' name. All right. So even as we're praying, we always declare that we're in the right places at the right times, meeting the right people, making the right connections. I've already had somebody, they reached out like, hey, Pastor, I saw this about the truck, da 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 You know, you can just take a look at it or whatever. So listen, we're in motion. Okay? We believe that we receive this thing. So we're going to take this step by step. Okay, thank you, Lord. Let me explain. Let me explain. Ooh, this is good. This is good. Part of what can happen is because of... I, let me just talk. Let me just talk. I felt like I had to be a little transparent with something, but I think this is going to bless you. This is going to bless somebody. There were certain things that I wouldn't say publicly because I felt as though we should have already had it or done it by a certain time at this point. So it was pride and it was shame that was holding me back from really doing some things God was telling me to do. Because of past mistakes and failures. But what that did was it still held us in limbo. It was almost like a spiritual purgatory. It puts you in a holding pattern. But God is saying, you can't be of no reputation. He's like, he says, I need you to be like Jesus, who was of no reputation. He says, you're too worried about your reputation right now. He says, I need you to do everything I'm telling you to do. There were people in the past that I felt as though I was supposed to invite to the ministry to preach, but because of how the facilities were at that time, I was embarrassed of the facility. But God told me later, the reason why I wanted you to bring them was because I wanted the anointing that was on them to produce for you and for your people. But you were so ashamed of where you were, you didn't obey what I said. And some of you need to come out of shame. You got to get rid of the pride. Yeah, we should have had X amount to do this, that, or the other. We should have done, okay, but you didn't. So you're here now. And God wants to show you through example how to come out of where you are to where you need to go. It's by faith. Your faith going to get you to your next place. And what you make happen for my house, I'm going to make it happen for your house. God says, I'm going, I'm, I am in the process of working some things in you for you to start speaking because what it's going to do is going to resuscitate, revive, reignite, which will in turn restore. Whatever you lost is coming back sevenfold. But watch this. I'm going to declare it brand new. That you, whatever you lost is coming back better than what you lost. And in the name of Jesus, I declare the year once again of acceleration, the year of the catch up. And Father, that men and women will see what you said. And great joy shall come. But faith says this, I'm going to rejoice before I ever see it in the physical. 
So in Jesus name, whatever has been damaged from your name and your reputation is going to be restored because I'm going to do it in the presence of everybody who is currently doubting you. <laughs> Yeah, you made mistakes in the past, but this is your restoration time from your bank account to your name. You better hear me now. God is in the restoring business. And I declare restoration of everything. Everything. I said everything that you lost will be restored in the name of Jesus. And the church say, hey, amen. Somebody give me some amens out there. So be it. It is so. You better hear me what I'm telling you. You need to go ahead and print out what you're believing for. Put it on your refrigerator. Put it in your bathroom. Put it wherever you frequent. Put it in your bedroom and declare we believe, I believe, that I receive. Some of you, you need a new car. What you working with right now, it break down on you. You can't even trust it. Some of you don't even have one that you need believe for. It. Get an image. I, I told you, I remember the first car I believed God for. I wrote it down what I wanted. I sowed seed towards it. I spoke over it. And then I went looking for it. And God gave me exactly what I prayed for. Exactly. I mean, even down to the dollar amount per month I was willing to pay for it. Within pennies, cents. I'm, I'm serious. I ain't lying. I was 20, what, 23, 22 years old or something at that time. I said, no. Uh-uh. I don't, you God, you told me I can be self-sufficient, possessing enough to require no aid or support. I'm tired of being dependent on other people to get me places. Uh-uh. Your word declares this. So I release my faith. I need to be free to go when I need to go, how I need to go. See, that's freedom. God wants you free. He wants you free in your finances. Some of you can't even go when God tell you to go because you ain't free. You locked in. And this is your God delivering some of you from jobs now where well, you're going to have money flowing in that is 10 times what you walked away from. Glory to God. Go, you bet, man, I just think that thing, that, that number just came out of my spirit there. 10 times. I was getting ready to say twice, but I couldn't even say it. 10 times greater than what you walked away from. This is your freedom. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. I don't know if this, I got to look this up. I don't know if somebody can look it up for me. I think, is it the Hebrew or the Jewish calendar that the beginning of the year is in October? I think it usually starts in like October. There was always something about October when God was speaking to me about things. I was like, what is it with October? What is it with that month? But I need, I need to make sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. So don't quote me on it. Don't quote me on it. But it's something about this fall. There's something about this fall. I sense that thing right now. There's something about fall of this year. Fall of this year. It's activate your faith now. Activate your faith. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man. Yeah. Activate without stress, struggle, or strain. Enjoy contentment with godliness. Brings great gain. When you're content, that means not complacent. When you're content, in other words, having the right attitude at the stage that you're in, knowing that I'm moving forward and I'm progressing and that I won't always be here. Now, your faith will cause you to begin a level of action because faith without works is dead, being alone. So now you want to have whatever your faith is working on. Now, what is the plan of action? No man goes into war without sitting down first and counting the cost. 
What is it? Sometimes that's that's not a that's not an indictment against your faith when you're looking at the cost. You're counting the cost to even know how to activate your faith, how to direct your faith. You need to put things in place. Oh, I got more than I even realized. I can move this around. I can move this around. I would qualify for more if I just didn't go out eating so much. And I begin to go grocery shopping and I take that money and save an extra five hundred dollars that moves over here. See, God will start showing you. He'll give you wisdom. See, I didn't even. Oh, Lord, I wanted to get to the Paul, the prayer that Paul prayed in Colossians. I was going to teach on that today. Um, it was six things. But one of those things, and I'll come back and teach it. I may have to do it next week or third. I don't know yet. But one of the things is knowing how to be filled with the knowledge of God's will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Understanding the will of God, but also having the knowledge and the wisdom to now manifest what you're believing for. And the, 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 the stick to the discipline and the consistency to follow through that God will call supernatural turnarounds and miraculous breakthroughs in the midst of great impossibilities. Supernatural turnarounds can be quick turnarounds, but supernatural turnarounds, part of that can be God giving you the strength and the patience and the resolve to handle the process that you're going through until you come out on the other side of that thing. And he said, there's an alignment that's going on. I'm telling you, like I've never ex sensed or experienced before in my life. There's an alignment. God is dropping jewels. He's dropping nuggets. He's, if I can, if I can just explain kind of what I'm seeing, for some people, it'll come out of nowhere. While you're in the process of doing, he'll take you from point D and all of a sudden you'll find yourself at end. And it's like he'll, there'll be moments where you're plowing and you're doing the process, but then he'll bring spurts in some cases of quick acceleration. And it's like, man, you're bypassing things. You're bypassing people, processes in some cases, but you're, in, huh, I'm trying to articulate it. In bypassing, when I say bypassing processes, sometimes it's like people are calling you to the head of the line where it seemed like you was behind the line, in the back of the line, and God will give you backdoor opportunities to people, and they'll say, come over here, I got something for you. And it's, it's the favor of God that's doing it, that's causing you, know, you to bypass things that you thought would have taken you years or months or whatever. It was like, no, you don't need to do all of that. Come over here and I can help you out. And God will be raising up people for you to be in the right places at the right times. And you're going to start experiencing this in places that you go to. I don't care if you just conduct a normal business, you're going to see spurts of favor and it's going to bring you back into remembrance of this. And God is doing it to strengthen your faith to know if I'm doing it with this, I'm going to get ready to do it with that. And you're going to have to be ready for it. And I'm telling you, great favor. He said, who prophesied man of God? I declare the favor of God, an explosion of favor, an explosion of his grace and goodness, like you've never experienced it before. Great favor. Some of you, God going to tell you, start paying off debts. They're going to be debts. You coming out of debt. You coming out of, oh, I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. I know it can be a stretch, but he says you coming out of debt this year. You coming out of debt. Now, that can mean some implications. Faith calls those things would be not as though they were. The minute you speak it, it is. I'm out of debt. All my needs are met. I got plenty more to put in store. It starts. God will start telling you instead of taking the money and buying this, Pay off this. And he's going to, I'm telling you, better hear what I'm telling you. The Holy Ghost, he started doing it with us. There's certain things, just pay it. Pay it. Stop letting it linger. If you can pay it off, pay it off. And there's one thing that's removed. And before you know it, you'll turn around and you will see, wait a minute. This debt is gone. That debt is gone. That medical bill is gone. That one's been forgiven. And he says, I want you to do this because I'm training you to live this way for you to live the debt free life. Amen. Yeah. You better hear me when I'm telling you, hear me when I'm telling you. So some of you start paying it all, but some of you is like, how can I afford this car? 
He said, just give me your desires, release your faith, and I'll help you with the rest. Just start the process. Some of you, whoever did, you believing for a new, I see a person, you're believing for a new car. Now, this can help for anybody. Everybody can be like, well, I received that for me. But it's like you're believing for new. But you keep looking at what you can afford. And I get it. I understand you don't want to put yourself in a crazy place. But hear what I'm telling you. Allow him to help you. Allow the favor to show up. Go to the dealership. You never know what will happen unless you go. Show up. Start the process. Move towards it. Start believing. Yeah, come on. Mm -hmm. I'm, I feel like I'm challenging your faith. Stretching. Believe. Believe. See, that's when you need God's involvement. Because if you can do it in and of yourself, you wouldn't need his help. You need something to work on your faith, to stretch you beyond your normal things that you used to doing. He wants you to go in the deep water now. He wants us to go in the water where we got, it's almost like sink or swim. Come on, I'm going to show you how to swim, Peter. I'm going to show you how to walk above the water, walk on the water that you used to sink in. All right. Huh. Whew. Amen. Amen. That was just the, man, that was just the start. I was just starting to encourage you. I, amen. Well, don't consider your body now dead, Abram, Abraham. Don't consider the problem. Let's consider the promise. Let's believe God for greater. Time to believe God for greater. Stretch your faith. Upgrade. See, this is the upgrade. This is what I was telling my family, telling my wife. It's like, and tell them about your upgrade. You see, you got to stretch. Pay the extra if you need to for better quality. Get used to better. Get used to better. Get used to better. Get used to better. You deserve it. You deserve it. Get used to better. Redecorate. Put a fresh coat of paint. Do something. Do better. Get new pillars for your bed. Get new cloth. Get new sheets. If you need to get better thread count, do something. Well, I can't buy a new bed. See, stop saying I can't. Okay, right now I haven't bought a new bed yet, but let me increase the sheets. Let me so I have a better quality of sleeping at night. Get used to better. Get used to better. Some of you just hoarders, hoarding up old stuff. And it's almost like, it, 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 it's, it's almost a, a demarcation of how you are spiritually. It's so cluttered in your thinking. Get rid of some junk. Come on. Your house shouldn't look like Sanford and Son. Get rid of it. Get rid of the junk. No, I'm saying it's just whatever it is. I'm telling you, God is trying to expand your thinking. Hear me when I say, y'all better hear what I'm telling you. I'm telling you what, uh, what I believe that the Holy Ghost is leading me to tell you. Stretch. He wants more for you. It's time to stretch. You need to ask the Holy Ghost, what do I need to get rid of? What can I, what can I clean out? What can I... Show an act of your faith. What new do I need to bring in? What are some things? Put new fixtures on the wall. You know, take off the old ones. Put in gold fixtures or the silver, whatever matches the decor. Do something different. Something as an act of your faith. No, this is our time for better. And step by step. Okay. I'm trying to explain it as best I can. This is how I see it. This is the way that it's coming up in my spirit. When you do that, it starts opening up the door for more. Because you're now your faith is moving in that direction. Whatever you start moving towards, you'll start seeing greater manifestations of it. So when you remain stagnant, not realizing that you were waiting on the thing to happen, he says, uh-uh. 
The way you start making it happen, you make your way prosperous and have good success. You meditate on it, but observe to do it. So when you start doing more to advance, then more advancement starts coming. Because your thought process is in alignment with it. So you start finding better deals. You start finding better things. Things come to you. You'll find stuff. Listen, you might be in a thrift shop and find an excellent piece of uh, furniture, material, clothing. You can find it in some of the craziest places that you never thought that you'll find better deals, more extravagant pieces, whatever it is. And God is just stretching you if that's your desire. Now, God gives you the desires of your heart. God gives you the desire, but then will manifest the desire. But God knows what you like. Man, listen, you better hear me. You better hear me. I don't know why this thought just came to my head. I'm trying to shut it down. If the thought came to my head like somebody loves a tool shed. That you just start bringing in. It's like, you know what? I need a new set of tools. Buy a new set. Get ready. It's, It's like expansion. I sense expansion. That's what I sense. I sense growth and expansion. Whenever you talk faith, you talk better. You talk bigger. You talk brighter. You talk cleaner. You talk sharper. (laughs) Okay, I think I'm just having to stop. I sense the spirit of increase. It's the spirit of it that it drives you to do more. It drives you to go into places and turn them into the Garden of Eden. You take the blessing everywhere you go. And if you're in something that's stinking, nasty, and rotten, when when you finish with it, it's going to be better, brighter. It's like, that's why I love restoration shows. And the, you know, we look at HDTV a lot and restoration shows and taking it from dilapidated to how, just how beautiful it can be. Because we just people, we in the restoration business. God in the restoration business. He'll tell there's some of you got some, you know, sometimes you're working with people, you're working in homes, and they got a bad structure, bad foundation. They got to go back and relay it and fix the foundation first. And then, because sometimes fixing the foundation after it's going over a period of time, then now sometimes it's more costly. And sometimes when you've been working a certain way in your life, and now all of a sudden you realize that somebody, you come into contact with somebody who's skilled at working with, glory to God. And it says, okay, you got to fix foundation first, your foundational beliefs first. And then you're going to begin to grow. Now, after we fix the foundation, now we can add on the rest of this stuff. And your, ooh, Lord, I, boy, I'm telling you. God, I wish y'all was here with me. Mm. Lord Jesus. Can somebody, somebody answer it in the comments? Can y'all, restoration. Restoration. Restoration, restoration, restoration. To its original state, not just the former, but the original state. Mm. You're going to live life in abundance to the full till it overflows. I see people, I see people creating their garden in their yards. You've been wanting to plant flowers and, and tend to your garden and just you enjoying your garden but you're enjoying the freedom that you have now. And it's gonna take stress off of your body. I can see it. It's taking stress off of you. Mm. I'm trying to hold in, Lord Jesus. There is a shift that is hitting you that y'all gonna shift into purpose. You gonna shift, I keep, you're going to shift into grace. You're going to shift into comfort. But that purpose, you're going to shift into enjoyment. There'll be work involved, but you'll enjoy it. Mm. Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Yeah. Are they receiving it? Y'all receiving it online? Y'all? Oh, God. I'm telling you, I, I think a part of me, I think I'm holding some of what I'm seeing because I'm trying not to call out. But I just see people. I see some of you. It's just such joy, such peace, where you can travel and you can, you know, you can go for moments of time, but you can still fulfill purpose and you're enjoying family, you're enjoying life. And some of you have been in such a struggle and fight mode for so long that you got to readapt. You got to learn how to adapt to peace so that peace won't be boring for you. You dealt with such drama that peace seems boring. So you will self-sabotage your peace for the excitement of the drama because that's what you're so used to. And God is weaning you off. It's like crack to you. And God is weaning you off of addictive, broken relationships, habits, self-sabotaging things and he said, you're going to learn how to walk in peace because some of you hate peace because when you have peace, that's when torment hits your mind. But the God of peace is going to clothe you and your minds will be at peace and you will renew your minds where you'll be able to be by yourself and enjoy you. You better hear what I'm telling. Lord Jesus. Your image of you is changing. Your image of you is changing. This was, yeah, me, I'm seeing women, I'm seeing some women here. Your image of you is changing. Whoo! Your, your identity is changing, who you are. Brothers, I'm telling you, these women rising up, they're rising up strong and you better make sure you know who you are. Because when you connected with a strong woman who knows her worth and who knows her identity, she don't tolerate certain things any longer. That just means you got to step your game up. We got to step our game up, fellas. Come on. Yeah, yeah. Men have allowed, listen, I'm telling you, we've allowed our wives, our women in our lives to carry us too long. They're there to work with us, not to do it for you. You a man, stand up in your manhood. Pray over your family. Why your wife out praying you all the time? You get up and pray. When the last time you laid hands on her? When the last time you spoke over her? Speak life. Ooh, yeah, hold it, yeah. She worn out because she tired. The Holy Ghost told me the other night, lay hands on your wife. Pray for her. She believe it, but you need to come in agreement with her. And I've been praying for her, but it was like, no, you ain't praying the way you need to be speaking over her. Now speak life and it'll take the weight off of her. Whatever it is that's been hounding her because of your voice, your, I, I created you to walk in this authority. I'm going to tell you just exactly. He said, whatever is remaining in her body after she's already gone through this process of healing and declaring, he says, go ahead and take up the slack and get rid of the rest of it. That's how he spoke it to me. You got authority. Speak life. Whew. Man, I, man, I feel I'm about ready to run through a wall here. You better hear me. Cast your care, the weight of it all is coming off of you. And God is going to reverse some of your lives by 20 years. In the sense of you're going to feel 20 years younger. Because the weight is off. And your body is healing. The reason why some of you haven't been healing is because of the stress. And you've been under attack. And because you've been in such stress mode and you so used to the stress, you don't realize you're in stress. And your body has been reacting to the stress. And God is removing all that stress now. 
You well, okay, I got this man. Y'all either y'all pulling this thing, I'm sensing this thing is strong. This thing's strong. This, this, this is the with God is speaking this thing. He is speaking this thing. There is a realignment hitting your homes. There is a realignment. No more stress. Well, you can sleep well at night. No more stress. If you got to buy a new bed, buy one. No more stress. Listen, redecorate. No more stress. Get the clut out. Put some candles on. Set an atmosphere in the mood. No more stress. No more stress. I ain't stressing about nothing no more. But I'm walking by faith. Hey, 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 hey. In the who? Okay, man, this thing running through my head. Okay, okay. It's, I see it. I see it. I see it. Building projects. There's no stress. You speak to the structures. Commanded to be raised. Commanded to be done. I ain't stressing. I'm going home and sleeping well. Hey, glory to God. God, you called me to do this. If you can't bring the money in, shut the thing down. I ain't stressing over it. Listen, I'm telling you, it's time. You, 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 you carrying too much weight. Some of you carrying too much weight. Man, I hear that thing. You carrying too much weight. Get rid of it. You worrying about stuff that ain't happened yet. Get, get rid of it. This your reaping season. In Jesus' name. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you. I declare that all is well with your people. Glory to God. If there's somebody who needs to receive Jesus, and you ain't never made Jesus Lord of your life, I want you to repeat this right after me. Say, Lord Jesus, come inside my heart now. I believe that you're the Christ, the Son of the living God, I believe that you died for me. I believe that you were raised from the dead for me. I make you the Lord of my life now. Say this, say, Satan, I no longer belong to you. Jesus is my Lord, and I'll serve only him all the days of my life. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for giving me your son. I'm saved now. Say this, say, Holy Spirit, Come inside me now. I invite you to live in me. I invite you to dwell in me. I now have the ability to speak with other tongues as you give me the utterance. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, you're born again in spirit field. Glory to God. Welcome to the family of God. There's somebody that may be out there that you don't have a, a, a church home that you're connected with, but God is leading and guiding and directing you to join this local fellowship. Listen, whether you're local, whether you're global, domestic, international, I don't care where, you can become a part of this work, whether you become a part of our e-church family. Listen, we want you to connect where God is telling you and leading you to connect. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So if that's you, just reach out to us. You can send an email to us at connect at spiritoffire.us, connect at spiritoffire.us. You can send us a message on our social media platforms and somebody from our connect team will get in touch with you. One of the things we got to understand is this. We are believing God now for uh, more workers and staff to come in to assist us with our development of the structures and systems that we are putting in place to help us build locally, but prepare for global. And so one of the things that um, if God is leading you to, to serve in any capacity, we need your support. Um, one of the things I do want to announce, we'll get the date to you. Um, we originally had scheduled because of a conflict in scheduling. Um, we're not doing in person next week. That was the fourth Sunday, correct? No, yeah. So instead, uh, we'll be, um, setting another date in September. So, We'll let you know when that date is, but we just want to give you that heads up. And so because we'll be celebrating actually 16 years as a ministry. And so we just want everybody to invite somebody to come on next week. Um, we just want to just give God glory and give him praise for what he has done, is doing and will do in our midst. And so we are just excited about it. We are going to now. Um, one of the things I just want to encourage is for us to 
as believers come together. Um, I want to, um, I'll, 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 I won't say it publicly. I'll, I'll share some things and send out some notices later. Um, but there's a coming together. We need to come together and gather together to strategize for this upcoming season that God has for us and to implement certain things. And so we'll be setting our calendar um, even for the next year and all of that kind of stuff. And so we want you involved with it. So we want everybody engaged and involved in supporting the vision. So even as we manifest the love of God, our vision statement says, as we manifest the love of God through active goodness and kindness, our goal is to teach people their authority, rights, and privileges as believers on the Lord Jesus Christ, pursuing their purpose, igniting a passion and fire for the kingdom of God, revealing to the world the true sons and daughters of God and blazing with his glory. So as we teach people, as we manifest his love, those are through outreach efforts and initiatives. We really want to amp that up. Um, my personal desire is for us to get going again with our scholarship um, that we begin to sow into people's lives. And for those going to college and things of that nature, um, we had the Netted Boyd Scholarship. It was named after my grandmother. And uh, in the past, we've been able to bless people with scholarship money for school. And so uh, we want to pick those things back up and different initiatives and outreach efforts to bless the community and make a mark and an impact in people's lives that can never be erased. And so your involvement is crucial. Uh, we're in the planning stages of doing some things, getting our tours going. Um, so we will be first stop in Texas. So I can't announce that now, but we're just getting some final details, locking in location and all of that. God told me to go teach these people who they are. And so we're going to be traveling and doing some of those things. And, and so for those that desire to travel and you want to you know, go to, with us to, to serve and to help bless the people, we'll make that available to you so far as the information. Um, but I just encourage you to believe God with us um, for those things that we're doing, okay? So I do wanna keep you abreast about that. And at the same time, as we're looking for other facilities to worship on a more consistent basis, we'll be worshiping for now at the Arts Community Center until we find another location. Um, here in the city of Richmond. And so we just thank God for you all for your continued support, your prayers, and your faithfulness. So at this time, what we want to do is we want to honor God in our giving. And so information is coming up on your screen. And I want to read out of uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6. And um, every once in a while, I'll do this. And I'm going to be doing a teaching on giving and just this grace-based giving and how we give, even as New Testament, Testament New Covenant believers. Um, as we want to sow into the kingdom of God and sow into the lives of people that we come into contact with. Now here it reads, um, verse 6, 2 Corinthians 9, 6, But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap bountifully. And I'm going to read this out to Amplify real quick, um, just to give more context to it. The Amplify Classic. It says, remember this, he who sows sparingly and grudgingly will also reap sparingly and grudgingly. And he who sows generously that blessings may come to someone will also reap generously and with blessings. Let each one give as he has made up his own mind and purpose in his heart, not reluctantly or sorrowfully or under compulsion. For God loves, he takes pleasure in, prizes above other things and is unwilling to abandon or to do without a cheerful, joyous, prompt to do it giver whose heart is in their giving. And look at the posture. He says, I don't want you to feel under compulsion. I don't want you to feel forced. He says, I want you to have the right attitude when you do this. Okay. But he also gives this stipulation. Now, if you sow sparingly and grudgingly, that's how you're going to reap. If you sow like infrequently small amounts, that you know you can sow more, but at the same time, you do it with, the, with a bad attitude. Oh, Lord, here we go again. They go to the offering. Well, let me just throw something in the, in the plate or, you know, give something this way. And just so I can feel like I did my little quota. See, he doesn't want you to have that type of attitude. This is a point of worship. We're honoring God with the resources that he's blessed us with. So out of how he's prospered us, we're honoring him with this. And so it should not be done lightly. It should not be done with a bad attitude. But now I can determine my increase by the level of seed that I sow. 
So now in correlation to what I have, now a person who has a hundred dollars for you to give a dollar, that ain't much, but yeah, $20 might be more of a stretch because you got to use the rest of the money to live off of things. So as you purpose in your heart, he says, okay, so let them give not grudgingly or of necessity, but God loves a cheerful joy is prompted to do a giver whose heart is in his giving. And watch this. And God is able to make all grace every favor and earthly blessing come to you in abundance so that you may always and under all circumstances and whatever the need be self-sufficient. See, possessing enough to require no aid or support and furnished in abundance for every good work and charitable donation. Furnished in abundance. Think about that. Think about a fully furnished house, lavishly furnished. They got more than you got everything you want to need in that thing. God is going to lavishly bless you so that you have more than enough to keep on sowing and to keep on giving. And as it is written, verse nine, the benevolent person scatters abroad. He gives to the poor. His deeds of justice and goodness and kindness and benevolence will go on and endure forever. And God, who provides seed for the sower and bread for eating, will also provide and multiply your resources for sowing and increase the fruits of your righteousness. Watch this, the fruit of your righteousness, which manifests itself in act of goodness, kindness, and charity. That's what we even got it from our vision statement. Manifesting, this is the fruit of who we are as the righteousness of God through which manifests itself. So we should actively be good, actively be kind, and actively show love and charity and having a benevolent spirit, a giving spirit, a generous spirit, not stingy. But he, I like when he says this, he's going to provide seed for you to sow, but also bread for you to eat. So you can always have something to give, but also have more than enough for you and your family to eat properly. You should never be without. And so this is a promise. So this is what we need to do. This is how we need to honor God. This is what we need to be mindful of. God, if you give me this seed to sow, you've also promised me bread for my eating. And so now watch this. Now, this is what the thought that came to me, but it's our jobs as stewards to manage properly the resources he gives us and not to just eat our seed or, you know, you know, he might bless you with a hundred bucks and he's telling you to give 10, 20, 30 or whatever of it. But now he's like, well, I just want to go out here. Oh, I got a hundred dollars. <throat> let's go out and let's eat. Let's go out and buy some. Wait a minute. First of all, ask God, Lord, what would you have for me to do with this? What is it that you want me to do? I know I already had plans for it. What do you want me to do with it? Let them direct you. Let them direct you. Let them order your steps. And watch what begins to happen. He can trust you now with more. Because he knows when he puts it in your hands, because you did it with the hundred, you'll do it with the thousand, you'll do it with the 10,000, 100,000, the million, the 10 million, and so forth and so on. Let's show God faithfulness where we are and watch increase hit. Information is on your screen as to how you can give, how you can sow. And uh, we have the QR code you can scan and take you to a secure page. We don't sell information to third party vendors, anything like that. Uh, we do uh, make sure, we wanna make sure that we're good stewards over what it is that you're sowing into this ministry. All right? Okay, y'all. At this time you can give, you can sow. And as you sow, I'm gonna pray over you, pray over the seed, but also uh, give the benediction as well. So Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare and decree, we declare and decree, increase. We, th we thank you for every seed sown. We declare the harvest right now. And we're in agreement for those that desire to give that don't have at the time, but that you will put seed in their hands for you promised it. And that, Father, even as, as they sow and that seed comes into their hand, they'll be faithful in sowing it. And that, Father, you will also provide bread for their eating as well. And that you'll increase their resources for giving. So we declare that we're out of debt. All of our needs are met. We have plenty more to put in store. We give you glory. We give you praise. And we give you honor for it now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you all. Love you guys. Thank you for sticking in there with us today. Ah, Tune in on Thursday. As we just, we're going to be going through prayer this, this week. So even during that time where we normally have Bible study, I'll be praying. Uh, I'm not going to be that long, but I don't plan on being long. 
So about maybe 30 minutes or so, we can enter in and pray certain things that you're believing God for, trusting them for. Let somebody know if they, you got prayer requests you want to send in to us, things of that nature. But we're going to trust and believe God together for supernatural turnarounds, miraculous breakthroughs in the midst of great impossibilities. All right. God bless you all. See you next time. Peace.